Welcome back to the channel. In this week's video you get to watch us go through the process of making a custom monogram sign. Now this sign was for our 1000 Instagram follower giveaway. We're really excited about this. Once we reach a thousand followers on our Instagram page, which is at Two Guys Make Stuff, we did a contest and people entered and we randomly picked a person to win this custom monogram sign. Then we reached out to the person and they told us their last name and what they wanted and what color and we went about making it. So we start the whole process here in Fusion 360. We bring in a DXF file of these monograms that we have. In this particular one it was G. And once we bring it into Fusion 360, we have to scale it to the size that we want. So we use uh, the scale feature. And then it's just a matter of putting in the text finding the font that we want that looks the best and then uh, we run it through the manufacturer of Fusion 360 we do the post process and then we get the cutting Now these signs are something that we sell and they're pretty popular actually. I mean, we have other options as far as the name, like how the name wants to appear. This one is cut out of the sign. We can actually make it so the name is cut into the sign, which is the exact negative of this. Um, it just depends on what the customer wants. We can do multi-layer for multi-colors. The options are pretty much endless. Now once we got everything like we like it, we go through and now we're in the extrude function of Fusion and we're actually building this piece out and we're going to get ready. Once we extrude it, we can save it and get ready to go to the manufacturing part. And the manufacturing part, that's where we write the code to tell the machine where to cut and what to cut. Once we get into manufacturing, we go and we do a new setup. So we this new setup that tells the machine where we where we're going to position zero on our cutter, and that's going to that's where the cuts are going to start, or that's where the torch is going to start on the machine. Then we go through and we pick the the cutter actual cutter that we're going to use, and that's depending on the thickness of the material, the type of material, and that tells the computer what the kerf is and the speed of the cut is going to be. And that's what we're doing here. Once the computer's generated all that, we go and we simulate it and we that little black circle moving around, that simulates the actual machine or in our case, the plasma torch moving around on the table cutting this sign out and we just do this to make sure that it's going to get everything that we didn't make a mistake here we're doing what's called the post process and this is how fusion 360 translates its information into the G code which is what the machine needs to read to cut the sign So here we got a piece of steel up on the table 
and we got the G code loaded into Mach 3 and we hit go and now we're running at about 260 inches a minute if I remember correctly about 78 volts on the torch eye control and those are all um, settings for 16 gauge steel which is what this piece is and 16 gauge works really well for most of our signs and a lot of the flat work and even the multi-layer signs sometimes we get into the 18 gauge um, for multi-layer signs because just to save on the weight and when you start layering the pieces of steel together they actually get really strong but 16 gauge works perfect for a single layer sign and as you can see this hypertherm 45 XP with the fine cut consumables does a really nice job cutting the sign and the 16 gauge is no match for the 45 XP. So there it is, it just finished up the cut. We just moved the torch out of the way and boom, just like that, the piece comes out. We take the piece over to our bench with the magnetic clamp and we just do a little bit of cleanup. Now most of this cleanup honestly is not from the torch or the cutting but because the piece of steel that we had was a little bit uh, rusted from sitting around. Um, there's a little bit of dross on the back and that's the the leftover from the cut but very little the machine does a really nice job so with the backside done we flip it over and we take our burnisher with the red wheel and we clean it up and get it ready for paint. As you can see this burnisher re leaves a really nice finish on this piece. If we were to leave this raw or just put a clear on it, the finish that it leaves is similar to a brushed stainless steel. So with the burnisher work done, it's just a matter of we just wipe it down real quick, make sure there's no residue left on it. And for this simple thing, it's just going to get some flat black. We'll do a couple coats of this and a coat of clear over the top of it. And that's it, all finished. Thanks for watching.